For today's video, I got something new to use while camping and with my trailer and so forth. It is a Pulsar inverter generator with 2300 peak watts, 1800 rated watts. And uh, this is more of a budget line generator, but I think it's going to be a fairly good product. So we're going to take a look at it today and see what we have. So first of all, we've got overall good good first impressions with the build quality everything's in good shape here nice rubberized parts on here um, cap is very stout you've got a lot of switches on the side here low oil light overload light and a light to indicate that it's actually putting power out you've got a DC outlet USB DC for charging phones you've got a ground uh, you can put this in parallel with other generators, and that's what these these two way down at the bottom are. And then you've got these uh, uh, switches here, which are actually have uh, rubberized weather uh, weather resistant covers on them. And you've got your economy mode switch, and then you've got your household AC outlets here, which is mostly what we're going to be using with this. So let's get some oil and some gas in it. They do send some oil. It takes 11.8 ounces of oil. And I got some gas there. Um, I'm planning to run ethanol free in this, but the gas I have right now is 10%, uh, I think. And it's uh, 89 octane. Here's a look at the engine with the side cover off. There's an access point on top to get to your spark plug, which is right down here. Oil fill is right here. Air filter is here. And overall, a fairly simple engine. It is the 80cc engine, which is used on a lot of different generators. So it's, it's a, a well-known engine. And you'll probably find it on generators that are a lot more expensive than this one. This engine takes 10W30 oil, but uh, you can run several types of oil in this. You could run SAE 30, that would be good in ambient temps over 80 degrees. Or you could run 5W30, and that's, that's good over pretty much any temperature range. And uh, in extreme cold below freezing temps, uh, zero, 0 W30 could be run. You've got a little fuel filter here to catch debris. Owner's manual recommends cleaning that once a year. I'm just going to put enough gas in it to run it for a couple of hours. And I've got some replacement oil because after the first five hours you're supposed to change the oil and then you're supposed to change the oil every 50 hours thereafter. Alright, here goes our first startup in the choke position right now and it looks like a left-handed startup down to about 3,000 RPMs. I'll turn that off while it warms up. Good. Good start so far. Well, it's running pretty smooth. Uh, no vibration on this thing. It's got some rubber pads on the bottom of it to help dampen any vibrations that may happen. Uh, still in non-economy mode. I think I'm going to move it to economy mode now. And even when it wasn't in economy mode, I could barely hear it at all out at the end of my driveway, which is maybe 80 feet away from this thing. 
and now I probably couldn't hear it at all at the end of the driveway. So it's it's a fairly quiet one. I know it's not the quietest on the market, but uh, I'm surprised actually. I was expecting it to be louder than this. All right, so we're in economy mode right now. We're gonna start to test some things. It's been running for about five minutes, six, seven minutes. We'll try the uh, vacuum cleaner here and see if it, it handles it. It's working, and if you come out here, it's revved up back to non-economy mode to handle power output. But uh, it did so without overloading it, and I didn't think it would overload. But I bet we've got about 1,500 watts on that vacuum or something like that. Okay, so the uh, vacuum cleaner, that was 1,200 watts. This is 1,560, window AC unit. I've uh, never tested this before, so here we go. Okay, it's set at 72 degrees. It's 77 in the house right now, it's kinda getting hot in here, so let's try this thing. running I'm just waiting for it to feel kind of cold oh all right let's let's turn off economy mode and see what happens all right with economy mode off the compressor has kicked on it's running full blast it's working great I guess um, when the economy mode was on the big power surge from the compressor had it uh, kind of caught it off guard it did not flip the overload light on. It did not go into overload mode on the uh, generator itself, so I didn't have to reset anything. It's just that the AC kind of uh, glitched out pretty much. Uh, it confused the AC because the AC tried to fire the compressor up and it didn't start. So after I turned economy mode off, uh, the next time it went to fire the compressor up, it was just fine. Okay, here we are, day two of the tests with generator. This is the important one. We're going to be trying the uh, RV style AC. I'm down here with the trailer. Um, I've got some ethanol free gas in that yellow jug. Never used it for diesel, so I figured, you know, let's just make that my ethanol free um, jug. And then I got a little fan there, which I need because up on the rooftop AC here, I had a video about this back in February. I took the fan off because it was way out of balance, falling apart, and it was creating a lot of vibration and noise. So now it runs smooth, it just needs some extra cooling over the radiator up there. So I'm going to put that small fan up there and see if that does it. So that's what the green cord's for. And then this yellow one, which is a 100 footer, we're going to be testing with the sound here to see how it sounds when you're inside the trailer. Is it too loud sitting right here, which is only maybe 30 feet, 20 feet away? or do I need to move it further? So we have 100 feet of cord here if I need to move it further away. We're up and running here. Just a little tip. I think you're supposed to uh, start it in non-economy mode. Uh, I wasn't paying attention. I started it in economy mode. It was a bit smoky. Still started and ran, but it was a bit smoky, which is why I think they recommend having economy mode off when you first start it up and warm it up. Okay, here's my setup up here. If you can see anything, the sun is shining real bright. Uh, but I got the fan running on, on setting number two there. And it's blowing a stream of air here, so we even need to make sure this AC starts while this fan is also running. Generator's down there. It doesn't sound terribly loud from here. I think we'd be just fine inside the trailer. Here we are in the trailer. We have lights. We're on economy mode, we're gonna put this to the test. It's probably gonna flip the over overload, but I don't know. So this is an old 1987 AC of unknown BTUs. I'm gonna guess it's a 10,000. Let's get the, uh, this is gonna be heat. And it is, it is pumping some heat, I, I believe. I mean, it's hot in here. It's probably about close to 90 degrees in here. So uh, let's move to, uh, that's low fan. So we have no problem with the fans. 
Hi, fan. We're just fine. Here's our cool. Nope. Okay. So, I'm going to go out, turn economy mode off, and see what it does. Well, we got our overload light. So, that's not a good sign. We're going to give it another try and see what we can do. Well, unfortunately, it does not start that AC. I tried a few different ways, a few different methods. Even not in economy mode, it doesn't start it. So what I'll probably end up having to do is get a 8,000 BTU portable AC that this thing would run and then pipe the exhaust of that AC out that window on the side. That's the only thing I can think of right now. But it does do heat. Um, it would do a space heater and it does fans. And it would probably do a coffee maker. Yeah, it would be fine with a coffee maker, vacuum cleaner. Even a mini fridge, this thing could probably power. But 10,000 or maybe this is a 13 or so thousand BTU. I'm not sure. I wouldn't think you would need more than 10,000 BTUs on a small living quarter section like that. So it is an old unit, so it's probably not the most energy efficient thing. But uh, yeah, we're going to have to look at some alternatives to uh, the rooftop AC unit on this. All right, so I think that's where I'm gonna end this video. Noise level was fine in the trailer. Uh, I've got it sitting over there on that pallet. Usually this area has some standing water in it, but it's, this is like the dry time of year. So I've got that pallet there for it. I'm still gonna run it. I am disappointed about the rooftop AC deal, but it was kind of a shot in dark anyways, and we will be able to work around it. And cooler weather is coming for us, so it's going to be more of just fans would be just fine for the for the trailer. So we'll probably make it through this winter okay, and uh, we'll look at some AC options in the spring. So I am going to keep track of how many hours I'm putting on this, and I am going to do an update video at about 100 hours. So that's one thing I had trouble finding on this was how does it hold up? I got a lot of reviews about initial impressions, but I want to know how it holds up after a while. So I'm going to do a 100 hour update video on this thing, and it shouldn't take too long to get there.